Praise the Lord, church. I'd like to welcome everyone back to another online service. As the pastor says, hope to everyone's staying saved and safe. I'd just like to go over a few quick announcements for everyone. Remember, if you have any prayer requests, names to add to the prayer list, or any praise reports, please send those to cljcrequests at gmail.com. Uh, since we're unable to pass around the, the fasting calendar, please continue up to do your, your normal dates. Uh, if you're feeling extra generous, you know, throw a few extra meals on there. Well, we need fasting 24-7 during this time. Uh, remember when all of our videos drop, uh, it's 8 a.m. on YouTube for Sundays, 10 a.m. on Facebook for Sunday service. Uh, Brother Thomas's lessons on Wednesdays are available on Wednesday at 5 p.m. on both platforms, as well as our Sunday school lessons that drop on Friday night are available on YouTube and Facebook at 5 p.m. I uh, just want to continue to let everyone know that while we're down here, we're continuing to pray over the names in the box, the soldiers, everything that the elders prayed for when we had service. We're continuing to pray for those things. And also the pastor is continuing to read out the names on the prayer list, and he's continuing to pray for them daily. Lastly, we just want to continue to thank everyone that makes this possible. Uh, thank the choir for the songs. Thank Brandon Need for opening their house up to me. I uh, thank for, for everyone that gets the messages ready. Those who are down here recording, everyone that edits, uploads, and any part that you played in this. We just want to thank everyone. We thank the pastor for trusting us to do this, and most of all, we want to thank God for making this possible. So. If you guys need anything, need help with anything, need someone to talk to, just if you need anything at all, just reach out to us, call, text, email, stop by, whatever it is. We love you guys. We want to help you, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. A long time ago, Lazarus died, all hope seemed gone as his sisters cried. But Jesus walked to where he lay, he called his name, and he came out of the grave. Oh, then, oh, then, where is thy sting, oh, grave, where is thy victory? You thought you had a hold on me, but you Praise the Lord, church. Give God, Lord Jesus a big hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and grace, God. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, lift up your hearts with your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we need to get our hands in the air. Praise the Lord. And praise God, hallelujah, for all his wonderful, marvelous works, God, that you've done among men, God. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God, and we honor you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We honor you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Amen. Good to be back in the house of the Lord. Better be greater when we all get back. Amen. Everybody gets in. Amen. Amen. Hope everyone's staying saved and safe out there. And I got a request, uh, Brother Davis, that them had put on uh, Facebook that asked prayer for uh, Brother Sean Stover's family, I guess in their church. Their 13-year-old daughter got killed last night in a car wreck. So everybody please remember that. That's, that church has had, Brother Davis lost his mother and lost his uncle and then his brother all in one week. And then this happened. You know it's got, I mean the family is one's really about the church suffers too and the pastor. I mean if you got a cure and I know Brother, I know Brother David has a care for his people. Amen. I talked to Brother David in Michigan. He's doing well. COVID, he's been back to church. And Brother Jay's wife, Tanya's dad, is doing okay. And But Jenny Nunley, uh, they have to put a trach in her throat and have to take her to Bristol to a nursing home down there. And, and my sister Charlene said she seen Brother Randy Ratliff, and he said, tell everyone hello, and he's doing good over COVID. Praise the Lord. And, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. How are you? And said, tell everyone he missed him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Larry and Jay and Cindy still doing okay. Last time I heard. Amen. And Brother Daniel and Tanya and family's okay. So God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. He is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. All the time. Makes no difference what happens. We don't know about everything. We don't know what people have to suffer or go through. And sometimes the Lord takes people out before, and probably times, times I look back at my dad's life, and I mean, you have to look back and say, thank you, Jesus, that he didn't see the things that went on afterwards. So you, there, you, after a while, you'll see that God knows what he's doing. Amen. But just want to say hello to Steve and Tracy. Uh, he told me your daughter had left and went to Texas, and I've been in those shoes, Cindy. I mean, Tracy, and I know what it is to child leave off and leave home and go that far away it, it's it ain't easy so my prayers is with you and my prayers is with them also amen that she does well i know and so we send our condolence out to sister mary and sister d booger and bear and the family of phyllis uh, Dwayne done the funeral and so just remember that family for their loss I love y'all and I miss you. Still remember our neighbor too, Danny Hooser, and also the little three-year-old girl, Caden Beeman. She's everybody remember that girl. And all the scripture says, as as the scripture said, let's all pray for you one for another that you might be healed. And so I love y'all, so let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for the mercy and grace, God that you bestowed upon us. God, all the blessings, God, you blessed the church with, God. All the blessings, God, everybody working, God. And Lord, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Lord, for the mercy and grace that you've showed upon us, God. We thank you, God, for your word, Lord, how you, that we have something to lead us and guide us, God, through all the troubles, Lord, when trials come, God, we got that word that we can go to, God, for comfort, Jesus. You said you wouldn't leave us, hallelujah, comfortless, but you would come, hallelujah, and Lord, we thank you that you brought peace to the world, God. We thank you. Through you, we can have peace, God. We give you the praise and the glory for it in the name of Jesus, and everybody said, yea. And amen. Praise God. Give God a big hand. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you, God. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you, God. I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I want to read out of Isaiah chapter 9. Christmas is coming, and so I used some scriptures that God had given me and to go along with this and make it, but it's Isaiah here is prophesying. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, whew, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon the kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment. 
and with justice from henceforth ever forever. This, the zeal of the Lord of the house will perform this. Then I want to go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 21. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she, call, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And then I want to read out of chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. In the east, and we come to worship him. Hallelujah. We come to worship him. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what we come to. When we get up for more and more to be worshiping him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're here to worship him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to title my message, amen, The Star of Hope and the Star that Leads Home. Christmas means a lot many things to many people but I hope before you leave here today you understand what it really is it's the day we celebrate or we call Christmas we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ as the prophet Isaiah recorded unto us I, I love this because really think unto us a child is born right. <laughs> unto us a son is given to us, hallelujah, amen. Amen, we could easy, easy call it a gift that keeps on giving. And not only keeps on giving, but keeps on forgiving, hallelujah, amen. Praise the Lord, hey. he just don't give, he forgives, hallelujah, amen. We got a good God, amen, hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that star of hope, hallelujah, amen. And that star that will lead us home, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. There was a 400-year space, or period, from Malachi to Matthew. No new prophets, no words from God that was recorded. A period of despair and no hope. The Apostle Paul stated it best for them in that period and for the Gentiles. In Ephesians 2 and 11, Paul stated, Wherefore, remember, that you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hand, that at the time you were without Christ, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, without no hope, strangers in the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, my Lord, hallelujah, amen. That 400 years of time going on, you'd think people, praise God, I don't know what you, I'd do if I couldn't hear from my Savior or I couldn't get an amen, an answer from the Lord. I couldn't talk to the Lord, hallelujah. Couldn't hear a word from the Lord, hallelujah. Don't you know that was a time, that was the time of despair and no hope in those days, hallelujah. Having no hope and without God in the world. 400 years of silence, no prophet, not a word from God, no hope without God in the world. As Apostle Paul stated it, he said in the shipwreck, when he was on the way to go to Caesar, he said in the third day, we cast the, all the tackling off with our own hands. He said, son of the stars hadn't shined. For three days, hallelujah, and said, amen, we were thin, all hope was gone, 
All hope was gone that we would be saved. You know, back in the 400 years, don't you know? Amen. There's some people that might have got a glimpse or read a scripture somewhere and wondered how, amen, they're going to get close to God or going to get saved. Hallelujah. But Paul said, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest mean, amen, the wind was carrying, the sea was rough. He said, it wasn't a small tempest on us. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. No way, nowhere to look, hallelujah, for some hope. It couldn't see no star. You know, the seamen of the old days, amen, they used to use the little dipper and the big dipper, amen, and the northern star to navigate by. But Paul said, we got nothing, hallelujah. We're in the dark, hallelujah, amen. We can't see anything. We're without hope, amen, praise the Lord. Oh, thank God, hallelujah, for the hope of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God, I can't help but quit, hallelujah, and just give him some praise hallelujah that we got hope today hallelujah amen praise the Lord true glory Paul was stating there is nothing for us to navigate by for scriptures reveal to us the beginning of the star of hope in numbers 24 and 17 was the first advent of Christ Balaam when debating with Balak he saw a vision of the Most High falling into a trance, but his eyes was opened. And he stated, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There, pay attention to this. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall arise out of Israel. Isaiah, when he was starting to use... His scriptures of prophecy, a child is born and unto us a son is given. It said, the Lord sent a word into Jacob. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Where he had lighted upon Israel. Now he sent a word into Jacob. And Balaam said, out of Jacob a star would arise. <laughs> Uh, you've got to have something in you before it can come out of you. <laughs> he, whoo, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. He said he sent that word. That word was in the beginning, hallelujah. That word was made flesh. That word dwelt among us, hallelujah. Amen. He said he sent that word, hallelujah, into him. And sometimes, you know, praise God, it's good. God said, whoo, glory to God. You know, God has told us His Word. He's told every one out of us His Word. But we ain't sent the Word into us. You ever got, had a Word sent to you? God sent a Word to me. I remember up in Charleston, I went up there, and this boy was sick, laying there dying, eyeballs as big as hen eggs in the light down over him. And I tried to pray and pray and I couldn't get nothing through. And God sent a word, said, you get down here on your hands and knees and ask me and I will heal him. Boy, I want to tell you something. I could, you just, you just automatically, down I go, hallelujah. Amen. And I come up and the Holy Ghost spoke out of me. He said, I will not be mocked. This boy will walk out of here. Two weeks later, I saw him in Charleston. Hallelujah. God just let me run into him because he had sent a word into us. We need the word in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We got Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we, whenever we just feel God is a healer, he's a deliverer, we know this. And he sent the word to us. Hallelujah. But we got to get it in us. Hallelujah. We, oh, hallelujah. Thank God. God, hallelujah. It had to go in before it could come out. The word went into Jacob and Jesus come out. The star of hope come out. Hallelujah. And the star that leads us home. Hallelujah. Come out. Fall. Isaiah said, Amen. A light into Jacob. And it has lighted upon Israel. Like I said, the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, and the Word was God. And that Word was made flesh. 
He didn't say he sent a word to Jacob. He sent a word into Jacob. And that's that word that was in the beginning. And that word come out. And that was Jesus. And Jesus told him, he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you ask what you will and it shall be done. We got to think about that just a bit. Most of the time, whenever we get ready to do something, doubt. We got so much junk and trash in our lives, Holly. Just like people's got about Christmas. All they think about is Christmas trees, uh, lights, uh, hallelujah, Santa Claus, all these other things. But that ain't what Christmas is all about, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. That Christmas is about a star of hope, it's about a star that will lead us home. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory. Hallelujah. Ask what you will. It shall be done. It's got to be in you before it come out of you. But God said he give it to us. Even unto us a child was born. Unto us a son is given. Hallelujah. Unto us it's given to us. It's got to be into us. No wonder Jesus said, hallelujah, if thou believe with all my heart and not doubt, you could say to yonder mountain, be thou plucked up and put over the sea. You could say to a tree, be pulled up and plucked out. Hallelujah. If we could just believe with all of our heart, hallelujah, but there's so much stuff in our heart and in our lives that we can't get stuff straight, hallelujah. God has to magnify His Word. He sent His Word and healed us. If we could believe that with all of our heart, we ain't got no problems. There was that Word from the beginning. That, was that Word that was with God. That Word that was made flesh. And that child... That was born unto us. That son was given. When the scripture stated in Matthew and Luke that the birth of Jesus was on this wise, the scriptures tell there were sheep, shepherds abiding in the field with their sheep. Matthew calls them three wise men. They had heard the word of the Old Testament, they had lived under the days of those 400 years' silence. They had lived during that period when there was no hope, darkness, no preachers, God not answering a thing. Hallelujah. No doubt they had read the book of Isaiah and they was looking, hallelujah. No doubt there was something in their heart. The Bible called them wise men, hallelujah, and said they come from the east, hallelujah, and they come, praise the Lord, and to Jerusalem and Bethlehem, Judea, and said, where is this that is born king of Jews? We have seen his star. We see the hope, hallelujah. There's hope in our lives, hallelujah. Amen. Now, we know, hallelujah, he's the star of hope. They talk about now Jupiter and the other Saturn. Twenty first next month, they're going to form an illusion that they're colliding together. It's going to be a star that hadn't been seen for over eight hundred years. They call it the Star of Christmas, the Star of Bethlehem. <laughs> That star of Bethlehem. <laughs> hallelujah. I know the star of Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Amen. That was that star. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That come out of Jacob. Hallelujah. That was that word that was sent into Jacob. Hallelujah. And came out. Hallelujah. That's a whoo glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. 400 years. Silence. No prophet. Nobody see. They had been anticipating. No doubt in, from the book of Numbers it's fully explained. And Isaiah, we have come to worship him. The star of hope has arrived. And that's what Christmas should all be about. 
We have come to worship. Hallelujah. When the day comes, you ought to get up for morning on Christmas morning and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. But all Jesus is going to see is Christmas trees and Santa Claus. Hallelujah. And lights are blinking and trembling. It ain't going to be the star of David. That's the star, hallelujah, in the world today. You better make him star in your life. Oh, glory. He can be shot of a hot to my hot tie. Hallelujah, Jesus. He was in, just like the apostle Paul in the shipwreck. He was in the world. All hope to see him being saved was gone. But he was not without God. He was not without Jesus. Paul said, you should have hearkened unto me. And not a loosened from Crete. You wouldn't have suffered this loss and this great harm. You would, this thing wouldn't have happened. He said, but now I exhort you to be of good cheer. <laughs> For there shall, oh, glory, there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. He said, but the ship, we're going to lose the ship. But your lives is going to be saved. I don't care if we lose the world. Hallelujah. I hope we do lose the world. Hallelujah. We better lose the world. Hallelujah. We better get rid of the world out of our lives. Hallelujah. He said, For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose God I am and whose God I serve. Saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And I have given thee all that sail with thee. And that's the reason for the season. The saving of the life, the Savior. Paul said, Amen, hallelujah. There's been a light shine to me, hallelujah. I got a star of hope. Even though the stars up there ain't shining. Even though, oh, glory to God, a star in my heart, hallelujah. Amen. A word has come into me. Not a word sent to me. A word come into me that we're going to be saved. It don't make no difference. The ship's going to be gone, but we're going to be saved. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. And lo, Jesus, that star of hope, having given thee all that sail with thee. We supposed to celebrate Jesus' birth, the star of hope, just like the wise men. We ain't supposed to be his son. But he's also the star that leads us home. There was another man living. His name was Simeon. The Bible said he was just and a devout man. And he was waiting on the consolation of the Lord. Now he had lived during those 400 years period of time too. But he was waiting. Waiting on the con 400 years. And he's waiting on the con Meaning the joy, the comfort, and great encouragement to the people. That's what he's looking for. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's looking for that star. He said the Holy Ghost was on upon him. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he wouldn't see death until he seen the Lord's Christ. And the Bible said he was led by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in young Jesus to do to him according to the custom of the law. Said Simeon rest and got him and wrapped him in his arms. And he said, Now, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace. Let him depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I don't, don't, I'm not only seen the hope, I got a way home. Hallelujah. There's a way been made home for me. There's a star that's going to lead me home. And I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. My God, I remember Mr. And Sister Murray. I went over there. She was in the hospital. And she was dying. And I went in there, sorrowful, to pray for her. She said, Brother Arnold, she said, I don't, I don't want you to pray for me to be healed. I'm tired. 
I'm ready to go home. I told my children how to live. They know what's right. I can't do no more for them. They can't do what I've done if I lived another hundred years. I couldn't change them. It's up to them to change them. It's up to them to see the star of hope. It's up to them, hallelujah, to see the star, hallelujah, that leads them home. It's up to them to accept it. I done accept it. And Lord, <laughs> let me depart in peace. That's all. I, was, I, I didn't know what to think. I hadn't been used to nothing like that. Everybody I see want to live. Hang on. 400 years. No prophet, no word. But he, like the three wise men, only had heard the prophecy of Isaiah. And other scriptures say the Holy Ghost was upon him. Whew. Thank God. He said, I'm ready to go now. He was revealed to him for the Holy Ghost. It's going to come. Now I've seen the star of hope. The star that leads me home, he said. Let me depart in peace. From mine eyes have seen thy salvation. He quoted the same words that Isaiah quoted. A light to lighten the Gentiles. And the glory of the people of Israel. Only thing different. Isaiah said the Lord has sent a word. Into Jacob. To lighten. This was the word that was made flesh. This was the light. Not only for our hope. But also to lead us home. Today, if it seems like you don't have any hope, maybe like Paul, maybe you feel like all hope is gone. But there is a light. There is a light that shines in the darkness. Thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to thee. King Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks I see, I hear shone around around me that I can clearly see. I thank God I can clearly see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank God he was shot about tie. Glory to God. It's not only it's a light to lead us to home. Today, like I said, if it seems like it's only dark in your life, all hope is taken away at Christmas, you need to celebrate the right way. We need to celebrate the star that leads us home. If you study the origin of Christmas, and I'm just going to say a couple things here because, I mean, really, if you've seen where it... How they started this, I mean, it blows your mind from how far away from the truth. It said it started many years before the birth of Jesus. The Europeans celebrated light and birth in the darkest days of winter when the worst of the winter was behind them. Many people rejoiced. The Scandinavians, the Norse, celebrated Yule in recognizing the return of the sun that bring a large log into the house. And feast till the log burned out. And the spark, they felt every spark that come off of that log was going to bring forth a new calf for a, a new sheep that winter or that summer or a new pig. Most Europeans and other people slaughtered their cattle so they wouldn't have to feed them through the winter. Then they had flesh and most beer and wine during that year. Because the grapes that they had done was fermented and ready for drinking. Finally, Christmas was celebrated about Jesus Christ. And then there rose a king, and he canceled it. But then another king raised, and he brought it back. And for the most part, it said it was replaced pagan religion on Christian believers. They attended church, then celebrated Recklessly, in a drunken, carnival-like, the atmosphere is similar to the Mardi Gras. <laughs> and then St. Nicholas, he creates Santa Claus. I'm just quitting there. About telling about 
Look how they worship Christ or Christmas today. We think all about parties, giving gifts, signing clause, and everything else. That's the biggest thing. To the three wise men, that star was a star of hope. They just come worshiping. Hallelujah. They weren't looking to get a gift. Hallelujah. But they got a gift. Hallelujah. A gift that would keep on giving and keep forgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. They came worshiping. Simeon said it was a star that led him home. He, he said, bless the child. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Today, I want the message to get to you today. Or whenever you listen at it. There's a song. It's not a gospel song. But it's not unchristian words in this song. Sometimes people need something to shake them up. To get their eyes open. They need a light to shine. It's a song about a man that was getting ready to be executed. He was looking for a glimpse of hope. He was like those living in that 400 year silence. Must not have known Jesus. And it goes like this. And I'm just going to quote it. And don't get upset at me for doing it because it's a country song but it said the warden led his prisoner down the hallway to his doom and I stood up and said my goodbyes like all the rest and I heard him tell the warden just as he passed my cell let my guitar playing friend let him do my last request let him sing me back home the songs I used to hear. Make my own memories come alive. Sing me back home and turn back the years. Sing me back home before I die. He said, I recall last Sunday morning when the crowds had gathered in. Or the choir had gathered in to sing a few old gospel songs. And I heard him tell the singer, there's a song my mama used to sing. Won't you sing it once before you move along? Won't you sing me back home and turn back the times? Make me all memories come alive. Sing me back home the song that mama sang. Sing me back home before I die. That don't have to be your song. That don't have to be your song. But every time I see somebody die without Christ, that song vividly comes to me, hallelujah. When I see, hallelujah, somebody, we're not living in a 400 year period of silence, hallelujah. We're not living in the days of darkness, hallelujah. We're not living in the days of no hope. We're not living in the day when there are no prophets. We're not living in a day where God is not speaking to his people. We're living in a day, hallelujah, where we got hope. We got we got a way home. We don't have to have a warden lead us to our destiny. We don't have to have a song to calm us down, take away our fears. Oh, glory, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't have to be your song. I don't have to be. There's a prophet, there's preachers today. Like Paul stated, we were once Gentiles living after the flesh where there was supposed to be circumcision, circumcision by hand. But he said, we Gentiles having no promise, having no way to the promise, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. In this world, or he said, no hope in this world without God. You don't have to be that today. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. You can amen. You can be like Simeon. Come Christmas time. Grab Jesus and embrace him. Hallelujah. Amen. And begin to praise him. And begin to glorify God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then when it comes time for you to go, you can be like Simeon. Lord, let thy servant depart in peace now. For mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. You won't be afraid. You won't need somebody to sing you a song. You won't need nobody to hold your hand or lead you. Jesus said, I'll go with you all the way, even until the end of the world. I'll go with you even until the end of the world. We won't need a song. This Christmas don't let be about Christmas trees and parties and lights and Santa Clauses. Be like Simeon. Be like the three wise men. Be excited about Christmas. But let it be excited about what Christmas really is. Christmas is about Jesus. Praise him. And then you won't, like I said, won't have to have somebody to lead you. Won't that be great? Not fear and death. Like Sister Mary. I want to go on home. Like Paul said. I'm a twix too. One to be here. One to go on to be with the Lord. Simeon, before parting this life, Stated, this child shall be for the rise and fall of many. I think next year will be the beginning of the falling away. I want to mind you, keep Christ in Christmas. I want you to remember the words of the Apostle Paul when he said, we were in this world. Alienated to the commonwealth of Israel. Lost, having no hope in the world without God. But said now we have been brought near or nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, amen. You can get to him now, hallelujah. That blood that was shed, that child that was born, that gave unto us, that son that was given unto us, hallelujah, that blood, hallelujah, that run down Calvary, hallelujah, is here to bring us back, hallelujah. Us Gentiles can stand up with the Jews, hallelujah, now, and call them brother, hallelujah, amen. Us Gentiles, hallelujah, can stand up and say, hallelujah, we we found the star of hope. We found the star, hallelujah, that leads us home, hallelujah. We have found it. I'm about ready to quit. I want to read to you, and I didn't get it mark it. Revelations 22, verse 16 and 17. It's the last chapter. I, Jesus, has sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and the morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hear us say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water freely. Now, it's up to you. It's up to us. He sent his word to us. And then of Christ, we accept Christ, then we accept that word. Because he was the word. And then, how we make that word work is up to us. Sometimes God will send a word into us. And we can't help but do it. It's so strong that it wipes away everything else. It wipes away all your thoughts. It's something you can't think about. I, I remember going to Bluefield to one of ours dying. And I was, it was time for me to go to work. 
But I couldn't go to work. This was when I was about probably 18, 19 years old. I kind of worked at Clotman Mills. I just had a little time to get to where I'm going. But the Spirit of God, like it led Simeon, into the temple, the Spirit of God was upon me, and I couldn't stop till I went over there and had, had prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something. But I want to tell you, all these things in this Word of God is for us, and it's for us. Hallelujah. Because of that child that was born unto us, and that son that was given us to us. That Word of God. Hallelujah. The gift keeps on giving. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. I miss you all and remember, God sent his word, Jesus, to us. But we have to accept that word, Jesus, into us. As Paul stated, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. But we got to believe. And there ain't no way that you can believe what Christmas really is. And having parties, signing clauses, uh, you, just, you just might as well accept it. We look back at these heathens back in, in those days, what they'd done. Went to church and then go out drinking and partying. Well, it's, that's going on today. I'm not talking about the church, but I'm talking about how you, we need to get Christ in us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. God, let us recognize this what it is. Hallelujah. Don't let us add something to it or take something away from it. Let us see, God, hallelujah, that you're the star of hope, that you're the star that leads us home. You're the bright in the morning star. You're the day star, God. God, hallelujah. You're the star that's going to lead us home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Father, we thank you, God, for your mercy and grace. We thank you, Jesus, for coming. Hallelujah. After all the many years of darkness, we thank you showed up for us. We thank you, Jesus, you shined that light on us, God. We thank you, God, that you've pierced our hearts. Hallelujah. And we know you're going to be for the rise and the fall of many. But, God, we don't want to be the ones that falls. God, we ought to be helped up. Hallelujah. You said a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. But we know he can't get back up unless you lift him up. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. For that lifting spirit, God. Hallelujah, God. That you can reach down today and touch all your people to God. And let them know, God, there's hope and there's a way home to navigate the light of the world. I love you. God bless you all. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Keep Jesus in Christmas. Amen. Amen.